We're joined now by Congressman Ro Khanna, whose Fremont, California district is home to the largest Afghan American community in the United States. Congressman Khanna, thanks for being here. Juju, thank you for having me on. Well, we know that you've worked to help evacuate Americans and Afghan allies in the recent weeks, and we understand that there are at least 50 Afghan families in the Bay Area, in your district area, asking for help evacuating loved ones. So how is your office providing resources to those, as Ian have mentioned, not only who've arrived, but for those who've been left behind? Juju, I'm very proud of my team. We've helped uh, numerous families get on the State Department list. They were able to get to the airport. Some had faced beatings. Some had to go multiple times before they could actually get on a flight. But we've had about 17 cases where families have been able to, to come. But in candor, there are still people who have written to us who are unaccounted for. We still have American citizens that we're trying to get out. There's still green card holders that are trying to get out. There's still SIV applicants that are trying to get out. Uh, so we are working to make sure that happens, and we want to work with the State Department to see what specifics we should tell these families. And can you give us some clarity on what those routes might be? And when you're communicating with these families, what's your message to them as they're arriving? And what's your message to American communities that are taking them in? My message first is that come visit my district. The Afghan American community is an extraordinary community. I represent the heart of Silicon Valley. They are leading as entrepreneurs. They're leading in technology. They're artists, they're poets, they're doctors. This community will enrich America. And we should stop the demagoguery. We should stop the fear and come actually see what the Afghan American community has to contribute. I welcome anyone on TV who is engaged in demonizing this community to come to Fremont and see for themselves. Uh, but we still have a hard job in making sure that our commitment is fulfilled to Afghan Americans and to those Afghans who worked with us uh, in this 20-year war. And I have been working with the State Department. We need to see. We need to put pressure on the Taliban at least to open the borders. We need to still have perhaps special operations to help rescue American citizens. We need to see whether they can go across the border to Pakistan or Tajikistan and then see how they can be evacuated. Uh, our work is not done. And the president today repeatedly praised the success of the American withdrawal, and yet so many critics are pointing to failures in planning, failures in logistics and coordination that led to the chaos, including the 13 deaths of U.S. service members. Where, in your mind, did the policy go wrong? Well, Juju, first, let me just say something about those service members. They're heroes. My heart is with their families. Uh, they really died in a valiant cause to save American lives and to save uh, Afghan lives. And I have so much admiration for them and uh, so much empathy for their families. I do believe the president was correct to bring this war to an end. That was a courageous decision. Uh, and this war had cost us a lot of lives. And it would have cost us more service lives had we stayed and we saw the risks uh, based on the ISIS bombing that occurred. Uh, there will be time to answer questions, and I'm on the Armed Services Committee. We're going to have a full oversight, but that oversight can't just be about the last 20 days. It needs to be about the last 20 years. Why were they general after general that came to my committee and said we were winning the war, knowing full well that we were losing? That needs to be answered, because that's one of the reasons that the, there was a mistake made in seeing how quickly the Afghan army fell. And the administration has acknowledged that that was a mistaken assumption. And that led to, I think, some of the problems with the evacuation. And you uh, initially applauded the withdrawal plan when the president announced it in April, saying that, quote, it will help bring peace to a country that for decades has been ravaged by war. But after this swift Taliban takeover, do you still have that same optimism? I do. I, I believe that it will put American service people at less risk. I believe it will have less of a cost. I mean, we've spent over $2 trillion in, uh, in Afghanistan. And then we don't remember all of the civilians in Afghanistan that have died. Now, I am clear-eyed about the Taliban. They obviously have had an oppressive history with women. They have had an oppressive history with, with girls. We need to continue to put economic, diplomatic pressure on them. And they need to know very clearly that we have over-the-horizon capability. We will strike there if they start to harbor any terrorists that are a credible threat to the United States. The president has shown he will do that. He's taken decisive action twice, uh, and they should not underestimate the resolve of the United States in taking action if there is any threat to our homeland. 
I want you to expand a bit on over the horizon capability. What do you mean by that? And, and in addition to that, what are you hearing from the Afghan refugee families? And what are they telling you about what they saw and heard under Taliban rule before they evacuated? Juju, over the horizon capability, as I understand it, just means that we have the capability of launching strikes, and we can launch strikes with uh, tremendous precision to take out terrorist threats that uh, affect our homeland or that impact our troops. And we have also special counterterrorism operations. We have them across the world that doesn't require a permanent troop presence. So the American people should be assured that even though we have withdrawn our troops, that doesn't mean that we have withdrawn our commitment to make sure that terrorism doesn't sprout up again in Afghanistan. This president is aware of the risks of ISIS-K. He's aware of the risks of al-Qaeda. And he's made it clear to the Taliban that if there is ever such a threat, we reserve the right to strike and take that threat out. We are uh, with the Afghan community, I appreciate your asking. I mean, they've been through an enormous amount of uh, turmoil and heartbreak. Uh, I know people there, almost every person in my community has a cousin there, a relative there, someone affected. Not all of them, by the way, can qualify as an SIV. They, they haven't all worked with the United States government. So they're anxious about what this means for their country. And this is why we need to continue to fight and stand up for human rights. I just don't think we can have our military bring liberal democracy to Afghanistan. We weren't able to do it for 20 years. There are a lot of thorny issues ahead. Congressman Khanna of California, thanks for your time. Juju, thank you for the opportunity. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.